Ah, there we are. Okay, good morning, uh, lads and ladies. Welcome to MAP 2302 Differential Equations. Uh, my name is Professor Filesticker, and uh, this is our first day. So we're going to go through all the normal first day stuff. But because it's such a short semester, this is a six week class, a summer B class. Um, we're also going to do some mathematics today. So there's quite a bit in front of us, but, um, but we do have to do the sort of standard day one stuff. So I'm going to begin with that. Um, first, real quick, let me give you a, a brief kind of tour of the environment for the class. I will turn on my screen share. It's going to automatically maximize the screen share on your Zoom window. I'll ask that you leave that maximized. Um, and a uh, quick note, I am also going to ask that you, um, if possible, please uh, join the Zoom meeting from a laptop, desktop, computer, not, not your phone, because you will need to see what's going on here. There's a lot of uh, important stuff. What is effectively the board, like the blackboard for this class, you'll be seeing here. Um, in fact, that will look like this. So. This is what will be taking the place of our blackboard. So that is 6, 28, 21. I'll begin each day like this. Um, and this is where I'll be putting the notes. Anything that you see me right here on the document camera is stuff that needs to go into your notes. And keeping good organized notes is critical for this class. Um, before we dig in any further, I just want to make a few comments about Zoom. So of course, here's going to be doing our class meetings. If you want to speak, and I will from time to time ask you guys questions, I may even cold call you. Um, you can hold down the space bar and treat that kind of like a button on a walkie talkie in order to speak, because you will be muted by default in this, uh, in this Zoom meeting. Uh, one other little comment here, you may have seen this, you may not in the syllabus, is that I'm recording these meetings. Uh, you should have been asked for permission to record at this, as you join the meeting. Um, and I'll be posting the meetings on YouTube, all of those recorded uh, class meetings on YouTube after each day's class. Uh, so there is a chance that your face, if your video is on, um, or your voice, if you speak during class, will be a part of that recording going up onto the internet where it can be seen. So just be mindful of your environment, your, your dress, uh, your demeanor, all of that stuff. Okay, so what are we going to do today? Um, we're going to talk through the syllabus. I'll try not to burn too much time on that because I know it's a little bit boring. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the online homework, um, how to use Canvas, um, all that stuff. And then we're going to cover section 1.1 in the textbook, which is on terminology. Oh, terminology and notation. Um, so we're going to go through these things. We're going to go through them in this order. Zero things, zero. Let me navigate over to Canvas. So since you're all here, you definitely found this announcement with the Zoom link. That's wonderful. The homepage in our Canvas class looks like this. Um, so you have here my name, you have here the class meeting times, you have here my office hours for summer B. Um, so every day we have class, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I will have an office hour from 3 to 4 p.m. Those office hours are Zoom meetings, just like this one. Um, and there's a link here you can click to join that office hour. Uh, if you click this on a day when I'm not doing an office hour at a time when I'm not doing an office hour, obviously you won't find anything there. Um, but if you click this link anytime between 3 and 4 p.m. on Monday through Thursday, uh, you'll be you know, uh, connected to a Zoom meeting just like this, uh, only there's a waiting room and I'll have to bring you in because sometimes people want to talk about things privately. Other important bookkeepy stuff, the final exam is August 10th. Um, August 10th at 8 a.m. I strongly encourage you right now in your phone's schedule app, go ahead and put this in there and put it in there with like a one day warning, a two day warning, a one hour warning, um, loud alarms, bells, whistles, all that stuff. Um, make sure that you put this somewhere. You will be reminded of it often. Cannot miss that final. Web assign, I have a web assign tab up. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, if you haven't done, already, please go ahead and download a copy of the course syllabus. Right, you can click this link, 
and it'll bring up this option. I already have one saved here because next we're going to talk about the syllabus a little bit. Um, standard syllabus stuff, you guys have all been through this before, so I don't want to burn too much time. The obvious things are here. This is my name. This is my email. Um, this is a mail to link. You can just click that. Um, my office on campus is A031D. That's the Northwest campus, the main campus, although I'm not going to be there physically. Um, that is where it is. So if you need to drop something with my secretary, pick something up from my secretary or anything like that, um, that's, that's where you find me. This is downstairs in building A on the north side. Uh, my phone number, this is my office phone number, 352-395-5367. Um, you can call this. It will get to me. I have it forwarded to my cell phone right now. Um, but I would much prefer that you email or Canvas message me. Canvas messages are the best way to get a hold of me. Class meetings, you know when these are. Office hours, you know when these are. Final exam, we've already talked about this. The prereq for this class is a C or better in Calc 2. The course materials that you will need for this class. Uh, the textbook is a first course in differential equations with modeling applications. We're using the 11th edition, uh, and this is a textbook by Zill. If you want a hard copy of the text, you're welcome to buy one. Um, I'll show you what it looks like. This is the book. Uh, it's an okay textbook. Um, I have a, a handful of differential equations books that I like more, but for our purposes, this is a, a perfectly fine book. It, it does well to introduce people to the subject and it, it is not terribly intimidating. You do not need to buy a hard copy of the book. I'll say that again. You don't need to buy a hard copy of the book. You do need to buy a WebAssign access code, right? That is necessary. And we're going to talk more about WebAssign in just a minute, but this is where the online homework is. Um, and there's also an electronic copy of the textbook within WebAssign that you can use. So that's why I say you don't need to buy a hard copy of the text. You do need to get the WebAssign access code, but you don't need to buy a hard copy of the book because within WebAssign, there is a soft copy of the book. As you register for WebAssign, it will ask you for two things an access code and a class key. The access code you need to buy. The class key is the unique identifier for our class. That's this thing. You can copy paste it straight out of the syllabus. Um, if you haven't purchased an access code yet, you can still register for WebAssign using the temporary trial access. Just go through the procedure like you normally would to register for a class in WebAssign. And when it gets to the point where it asks you for your access code, look for a little link um, that says, you know, continue with trial access or continue with temporary access. Um, that should get you two weeks. Uh, so if you're waiting for your financial aid to drop, you're waiting for something like that, then you can, um, you can use the temporary access for a couple of weeks while we wait for your money to get here or your access code to come in the mail or whatever. Um, but you've got homework starting this week. You've got homework starting today. So you need to get into WebAssign today. Calculators are not going to play a big role in this class. Um, but if you want to use one, the TI-30 is the only one that's allowed. It's the, specifically the TI-30II or TI-32XS. Um, you won't need it. Definitely no graphing calculators, no computer algebra systems, no smartphones, no none of that um, allowed on the test. So if you feel more comfortable having a calculator in hand, this is the one you can get. It's like 12 bucks at Walmart. Um, maybe cheaper on Amazon. The other thing you definitely need for this class is a computer, uh, not just a cell phone, a computer. You need a computer with an up-to-date web browser, consistent internet access, and a functioning webcam. You're not required to have your cameras on during class, but you will be required to have them on during exams. I'll talk more about how exams are proctored in a second. Um, so please um, make sure you've got these things, especially when we're coming up to a test. Course description, we're going to talk about differential equations. Um, we're going to learn how to solve as many differential equations as we can. Solving differential equations is hard as hell. Um, if you want to see the official course objectives, you can follow this link. They'll talk a little bit about the specific kinds of differential equations that we'll learn how to solve. I know that it's entirely likely that you don't even know what a differential equation is yet. Um, so don't be intimidated if, if you're not sure what that means. The other things uh, we're going to talk about are called Laplace transforms. I will talk a little bit about numerical methods, um, boundary value and initial value problems, um, and we'll talk about series solutions to differential equations also, although that's not in here. Uh, cell phone policy, not super relevant, um, but you know, technology in general, just uh, be polite. Don't distract other people. Please don't be sending people like messages on Discord or wherever um, during class. Please keep your attention here. 
Uh, if you want to talk to somebody in class, you know, just go ahead and hold down the space bar or use the chat function. But um, but please don't be messaging people outside of Zoom during class. It's very distracting. Attendance, I'm going to take role every day using Zoom logs. Um, that's important for a couple of reasons. First, for financial aid. Uh, obviously, if you want your financial aid to disperse, I have to mark you as, as attending the class. Uh, so please use your, your real name as it appears on your SFID in Zoom. That way I can mark you as having attended and you can get your financial aid. Um, there's no attendance component to the grade, but I cannot say enough, especially during these six week classes, how important it is that you do not miss class. You must come to every class meeting. You must take notes. Makeups. Um, I tend to be pretty lenient about this stuff. As long as you can communicate with me, you know, oh, I'm, I missed this homework or uh, I'm going to miss this test. Just talk with me and I'll work with you as much as I can. My policy is specifically around exams. Um, you need to communicate with me what's going on. You need to explain to me why you missed the test and the makeup needs to be scheduled within a week of the original test day. Homework and study guides. Uh, I'm going to be hitting you guys with two homework sets per week in WebAssign, uh, except for this week being the first week. Um, and I know it's going to take people a little bit of time to get accustomed, um, but homework is going to be due on Mondays and Wednesdays at the start of class. So you're gonna have two homework sets per week. One homework set will be due on Monday at the start of class. The next homework set will be due on Wednesday at the start of class. This means you need to be working on homework every single day. Now, that's not an exaggeration. I'm not being hyperbolic. This is a difficult mathematics class that's being compressed from 16 weeks down to six weeks. You need to work on homework every single day, including today. Before each midterm, I'm going to give you a little study guide. These are going to be like homework assignments for which you need to write out your solutions. You will then submit those solutions in Canvas where I will grade them. The study guide grade comes from your written solutions, not from completing the assignment in WebAssign. You should talk about your solutions with other people for the study guides. Uh, it's the opposite of an exam. I really want you to talk about your work with other people. I want you to talk about it with me. I want you to share your ideas as much as you possibly can. Um, and see what other folks have to say, see if everybody agrees, see if there are any notation issues or things like that you should work on. And again, to get credit for the study guide, you need to hand in the written work on or before the day of the test. Three midterms, one final. Um, midterms are gonna take place during regular class time and I'll be using kind of dual method to proctor. I'll be having honor lock up. Um, so your test will be in Canvas. Honor lock will be running. Um, but you will also be signed into Zoom on your phone for those tests, so I can keep an eye on you. So uh, I'll talk more about that as we get close, but basically you're going to have uh, your phone set up on the side of your desk where I can see your hands, your page, um, your paper, everything like that, while simultaneously running on a lock on your computer. Uh, again, the date of the final, 8, 10, or 8 a.m. All right, recording notice, we talked about this. Everything's being recorded. I posted on YouTube, so just be mindful. Some important dates, other stuff to put in the calendar. Classes begin today. The last day to add a class is tomorrow. The last day to drop a class and get your money back. If you're like, fuck, I hate this class. I hate this guy. I don't want to do this. There's just too much going on. Last day to get your money back, 7-1, July 1st. Um, on the 5th, which I think is next Monday, the college will be closed to acknowledge the 4th of July, Independence Day. Um, so we won't have class on the 5th. The last day to get a W, right? The last day to withdraw from this class and not receive any sort of letter grade A through F um, is July 26th. The last day of class is August 7th. The final again is the 10th, um, 10th of August. And you'll see your grades up in East Santa Fe by August 13th. Speaking of grades, here's the grade breakdown. Homework is worth about 8%. The study guides are worth about 13%. The midterms collectively are worth about 53%. And the final is worth about a quarter of the grade, 26%. Whether you like to go by points or percentages, the breakdown for each letter grade is right here. I use the regular A through F system, uh, each you know 10 points. Um, being a grade. And then the top 3% of each category earns the plus designation. All right, I know that your eyes are all glazing over. We're just talking about syllabus stuff. It's boring. This is all the regular boilerplate syllabus stuff that I'm not gonna read to you. If you wanna read this, just click the links. 
Um, nothing you really need to worry about there except the obvious things like don't be an asshole. Don't be an asshole to me or to your fellow students. Know the rules of the college. Know what you're being held responsible for. Um, if you have any accommodations through the DRC or you suspect that you are entitled to any accommodations through the DRC, whether you've registered with them or not, please reach out to me. I'll do everything I can to help. Um, sometimes the DRC can be a little slow about getting those accommodations built in. Um, I will work with you independent of them if necessary. Um, there's a thing on academic integrity here. Please read this, but I'm just going to come down here to my personal little extra note on cheating. Over the last year and a half, we've been teaching online. I have seen cheating wax and wane. Um, it got really, really bad last fall. Uh, I had one Calc 2 class where I had to fail about 10 people just based on their cheating on the final exam. Um, I don't know any nice way to see this. I can tell when you cheat. It's really not that hard. I'm familiar with all of the online mechanisms like Symbolab, Wolfram, Integral Calculator, all that bullshit that people used to cheat. You've even seen answers copied from Quora. I know what they look like. Don't fuck with me. Don't fuck with me. I'll know if you cheat. Please don't cheat. If you think you will be tempted to cheat, just talk to me, right? Just talk to me. Like I said, I'm very lax about makeups. If you need a little bit more time, you know you're just absolutely boned. Um, instead of cheating, communicate with me. Don't try to pull one over on me. I promise I'll catch you. I'll catch you and I will do everything I can to wreck you if I catch you cheating because I hate that shit. I really do. It devalues your degree. It devalues your peers' degrees. It's insulting to me personally. Please, 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 please don't cheat. I can tell. Don't do it. I will work with you. If you think you're in a position where you will need to do something sketchy, just talk to me. I promise you I'm very friendly. I'll work with you, um, but don't, don't do that shit. All right, course calendar is here. Give you an idea how fast this class is going to move. We got six weeks, which means we're going to cover an average of four sections in the textbook per week. This week, we're going to cover sections 1.1, 1.2, and 2.2. You notice it's a little bit out of order, um, but there are good reasons for this. I was very careful in designing this. Your first midterm exam is next week. It's during week two. So you've got very little time to mess around. You need to start working on homework immediately. You come to office hours with questions. Um, be diligent. Our first exam is probably going to be uh, Thursday of next week. Um, so again, just giving you an idea of the pacing. Uh, your second midterm is going to be towards the end of July, um, probably the third week of July, the end of the third week of July. And your last midterm exam is going to be the end of the first week of August. And then the final exam is the second week of August. So we're moving incredibly quickly. Um, that, that necessitates a great deal of work on your behalf. Uh, this is a rough outline. I might change these things a little bit. Specifically, I might move exam dates around a little bit to accommodate you guys, depending on how well I feel the class is absorbing the material and how well you're getting through the homework, that sort of stuff. All right, that's the syllabus. I don't want to waste any more time. Um, just rambling, are there any questions about policies outlined in the syllabus or anything like, like that? Anything you guys would like to ask? <clears throat> I have Remember a question. To talk. Oh yeah, Mila, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, I have a question about the exam. Is it gonna be uh, sections one and two? The first midterm? Yes. So the first midterm is gonna cover, yeah, mostly chapters one and two. Uh, we're not covering every single okay. section in those chapters but all of the material for exam one will come from chapters one and two. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it'll be exactly these sections. Alrighty. Other questions? Okay, so if you have not done so already, please um, come to our Canvas page here, click this link and save a copy of the syllabus somewhere on your computer, um, because there are lots of things in there that you will gonna, gonna wanna refer to over the semester. Um, what next? I guess we should talk about WebAssign and tutoring. Okay. Uh, before we do that, exams. Um, all of the things that are not in WebAssign, you'll find in Canvas. So here in Canvas, you'll see a spot to submit your first study guide. You'll see here the link that you're going to click to take exam one. Um, 
We'll talk about this more later, but with the exams, you need to submit your written work for each question and you do that separately after you finish the test. Um, so after you finish, you know, entering your answers for exam one, submitting the test, you'll come here and submit scans for your written work. I recommend um, Cam Scanner for scanning. If you don't have a physical scanner, Cam Scanner on your phone works great. That's what I use. Um, please don't just take pictures. Uh, I like PDFs before uh, from Cam Scanner or some similar scanner app. So study guides and exams, we talked about those. This is where I'm gonna put in your homework average from WebAssign. You don't have anything that you actually need to submit here. Um, but everything else is self-explanatory. One more thing before we move out of Canvas, if you go to the modules section, um, you'll see I've put together a bunch of review material for you. These come primarily from two sources, Paul's Online Notes and Patrick JMT. Paul's Online Notes, great website. Um, it's all, all built with LaTeX and you can see anything that you wanna see about differentiation. Like if you forget how to use the chain rule, you can come here and not only does he have the definitions and examples, um, definitions, examples, but he has solutions that you can kind of reveal one step at a time. And he'll even have like practice problems for you to work, really, really good stuff. So if you need to bone up on any of these things, and take a look at the modules here, make sure you remember what these things are. Um, and if there's any of these things that are intimidating to you, like maybe your Calc 2 class didn't cover trig sub very well, or uh, maybe you hate integration by parts, you know, come here and take a look. Um, Paul's online notes is if you want to read and find practice problems to work. Patrick JMT is a YouTube channel. If you want to watch somebody else solve things and talk through them as, as they do, uh, Patrick JMT is the best. So, that's that. Here's WebAssign. Coming back to Canvas here, if you click the link, I've got uh, click here to access WebAssign. We'll take you to WebAssign.net. Uh, after you've registered for the class and everything, you just click log in and it will take you to a page that looks like this. Your first homework set I posted this morning before class. It is due next Monday. Um, so normally, like I said, homework will be due on Mondays and Wednesdays. I'm giving a little bit of leniency on this very first homework set, uh, just because I know it's gonna take some time for everybody to, to get in. But uh, yeah, so the homework for this week is gonna be a single homework set due next Monday, but every other week there's gonna be two homework sets, one due on Wednesday and then the next one due on Monday. So I will lecture on material Monday and Tuesday. That homework, that relevant homework will be due on Wednesday. Then we'll lecture Wednesday and Thursday. That homework will be due the following Monday. So you have two homeworks that's due every week, except this week. Um, and the homework is in WebAssign. What am I forgetting? Tutoring. So uh, Santa Fe does have a tutoring system set up through the Learning Commons. I think they're back to doing some in-person tutoring now, but definitely they're still running the Zoom tutoring, uh, which can be quite effective. So if you click this link and follow these instructions, I'll show you what it looks like. Click this link. Scroll down to Math and Statistics. That'll take you to the Learning Commons Canvas page. They've got the schedule here, right? In person, online. Um, click that link. And then go to Math, Sciences, and Business Tutoring. It will open a Zoom session for you. So use the tutors, all right? You can come see me three to four in any class day, three, three to 4 p.m. for uh, help on problem solving or anything like that. But outside of the office hours, use the tutors. The tutors are good. I can specifically recommend Alejandro. Alejandro is awesome. Um, he knows his shit. I'm sure there are other tutors that know their shit well also. Okay. I think, I think that's all the intro bookkeeping stuff. Um, I suppose one other thing to say here, the dates for the tests. I did input dates here, so you have a, a rough idea of when these things will be, but um, they may change, right? The dates in Canvas, I will announce the day of the test at least one week in advance of the test itself. Um, so don't, don't panic if you see those dates changing. Um, and if you're ever curious about when a test is going to take place, just ask. I'll make sure to announce and reset the dates in Canvas at least one week in advance of the actual test day. All right.
I do believe that's all the bookkeepy stuff. So are there any questions for me about syllabus things, organization things, web assign, what you need to start doing today, anything like that? Just so I'm not crazy, um, I noticed that WebAssign is asking questions about the order of a differential equation. That's not review, is it? No, nope. nope. we're gonna start talking about that right now, or as soon as we finish this, this little intro. So yeah, I, don't, I do not expect you guys to even know what a differential equation is yet. We're gonna learn that in the next few minutes. Any other questions? Take a look at the chat here. Remember, you can also type questions. I'll, I'll say one more time for anybody who came in late. Um, to speak you know, through the microphone, hold down the space bar. Um, think of it like a walkie-talkie button. If you're shy or you just prefer to type, I'll have a chat window open that I'm watching also. So you can type questions in chat. I'll respond to them as they come in. All right. Um, so no. You must. Get in to web assign today. I approximate that the homework for this week will take no less than three and a half hours, no more than five hours. You don't want to wait till next Monday to do that shit, right? Remember, it's due at the start of class. It's due at 9.45 next Monday morning. Um, don't wait till Sunday. Don't wait till Saturday. Get in there today and start solving problems. The class key is in the syllabus. And oops, syllabus. And you can register. You can start. Even if you don't have your access code. Even if you don't yet have your access code. Okay. So. Here we are at the start of class proper. Question, what is a differential equation? It's not often we get to start a math class by asking a question this open-ended. Um, has anybody heard of differential equations before? Can anybody tell me a little bit about them or just explain to me? Differential what equation is the representation of a function in terms of its slope on a line. That's that's one way to think of it, sort of. Yeah, we can we can think of a function as or a collection of slopes. Uh, it's change, basically. It's uh, delta. Uh, I can't get the words. Oh, that's okay. That's a good answer, Cody. And the, the uh, that's definitely getting at the right idea. It's getting at the right idea. Um, but what about this word equation? How does the word equation come into differential equation? Has anybody else heard a, another notion of what a differential equation is? Um, one of the ones I've heard is where it's more important to look at how a function changes over time rather than like any particular value of the function. Certainly that's true. What Ross said there is true that um, we're concerned here with how various derivatives of functions behave, not just at a point, but over intervals or, or even over higher dimensional um, subsets of their domains. I'll give you an answer that is um, correct and thorough. And while everything you guys said is correct also, this goes a little bit further, a differential equation might seem a little redundant, is an equation um, relating the derivatives of a function
to the function itself. So first and foremost, the differential equation is an equation, meaning it's an expression with an equal sign. Um, and the, the objects that you see in the equation are derivatives of an unknown function. The solutions to a differential equation And solutions here, plural, there can be more than one, um, is or are functions. So normally uh, in algebra or even calculus classes, when you're trying to solve an equation, you're trying to find some numbers that satisfy that equation. Here, you're trying to find a function or maybe many functions that satisfy a relationship between derivatives. Um, and before we go any further, I want to look at a super simple example. I'm going to use the prime notation here with the understanding that y is a function of x. Um, the expression y prime equals y is a differential equation. I'm going to abbreviate the word equation with EQN. Y prime equals Y. That is an equation, right? There's an equal sign here. Um, and the objects related to each other by that equation are the derivative of some unknown function and the unknown function itself, right? This is it. This is about as simple as differential equations get. Does anybody know a solution to this differential equation? I'm going to be paging over here. E to the x. Yeah, very good. So remember, we're trying to think of a function that satisfies this relationship. And what this relationship says is that the derivative of that function is equal to the function itself. So one solution to the differential equation y prime equals y is the function y equals e to the x. Now, how would you verify that? You would build the differential equation, right? We can verify. If y is equal to e to the x, then y prime is the derivative of e to the x. which is just e to the x. So plugging in, we get y prime equals y. That's the same as e to the x equals e to the x, uh, which is true. Now, there's some subtlety here, which is true for all real numbers, x. It's possible that you find a function that satisfies that differential equation, but maybe not everywhere, maybe only for uh, a, a certain interval of, of x values. Now here, uh, e to the x, the domain of e to the x as a function is all real numbers. And everywhere on its domain, e to the x is equal to its own derivative. So it not only is this equation satisfied by that function, it's satisfied by that function for every real number x, everywhere in its domain. All right. 
So what is a differential equation? It's an equation that relates y to y prime, maybe y double prime, maybe y triple prime, relates all the various derivatives of a function to the function itself. Uh, and perhaps some, some other shape. Uh, there might be some x things floating around in your expression also. But at the heart, a differential equation is a, an equation between a function and its derivatives. There are many different kinds of differential equations. And the way we solve them depends on kind of what categories they fall into. Um, before I move on, can anybody think of any other solutions to this differential equation? Y prime equals Y. We've got e to the x, and it's true that e to the x is a solution to that differential equation. We are able to verify that here. Are there any other solutions? Would y equals 0 be 1? Yeah, yes, it would. Um, it's true that because this is what's called a homogeneous differential equation, the null solution, y equals zero, uh, does indeed work. So the answer to this question, are there any other solutions, is yes. Um, y equals zero works, right? The, the function zero, his derivative is zero because this is a constant function. Um, and zero is equal to zero. So that's what we call the trivial solution. And that's because this is what's called a homogeneous differential equation. I'll talk about categorizing these things very soon. Um, any other solutions? I see we have something in chat. Oh, I'm sorry, that was from earlier. I missed that. Okay, thank you, Miguel. Yes, you're correct. Um, can we think of any other solutions besides the function e to the x and the function zero? A constant multiplied by e to the x. Very good, very, very good. So Cody um, points out that you could take something like 2e to the x. This also works. Because then y prime would still be 2e to the x. And yeah, these are equal. OK. And more generally, what Cody actually said is that if you take any constant, c times e to the x, this is the most general non-trivial solution. I'll just say um, and here where C is an arbitrary constant. And you've encountered that notation before, uh, C being an arbitrary constant. You saw that in Calc 1, Calc 2, when you were integrating, doing um, indefinite integrals, you encountered arbitrary constants. Uh, I will show you, when we talk about separation of variables, how to arrive at this solution following a very mechanical process called separation of variables. Um, but not, not today. Today, we're just thinking and solving by inspection, right? We think about what are all the functions who are equal to their own derivative? We have the zero function works, e to the x works, 2e to the x, or in general, any constant times e to the x would work. And you see it here, if you take c equal to zero, you actually get um, all, you get this solution also. If you take c equal to one, uh, you get this solution. If you take c equal to two, you get this solution. So this very bottom guy right here, c times e to the x, that gives us all the solutions in a single expression. Yeah. Any questions on what we've done here?
All right, and now I'll give you just a second to make sure your notes are caught up and clean. I'll tell you, you don't need to write this down, but I'll tell you. The differential equation we're playing with here is called a first order linear homogeneous ordinary differential equation. That's a real mouthful. But each one of those words represents a, a possible kind of set of, of descriptors. Um, we call it a first order equation because the highest order derivative you see here is just the first derivative. Um, we call it a linear equation um, because the y's and y primes only show up to linear, uh, only show up to the power of one and upstairs. Um, the, it is linear in y, y prime, and all of that. Um, we call it homogeneous because there isn't any uh, x terms over here. I'll show you again. What, uh, I'll be more specific about that in just a second. And we call it an ordinary differential equation because it doesn't involve any partial derivatives. Um, because the functions that we're looking for to solve this differential equation are functions of a single variable. So we've had time to catch up the notes now. I'm going to go ahead and start classifying differential equations for you. In this class, we'll be primarily concerned um, with ordinary differential equations. But at the highest level, differential equations can be split into two categories. So. There are two big groups. of differential equations. You have what are called ordinary differential equations. Oops, sorry, ordinary differential equations. Uh, and you have what are called partial differential equations. Ordinary differential equations, um, you'll hear me say this again and again, these are ODEs, partial differential equations, these are called PDEs. So these are your sort of two big families or groups of differential equations, ODEs, PDEs. An ordinary differential equation um, your solution is a function of a single variable. So uh, let's see, actually, what have I done here? Single independent variable. Um, and they involve regular differential operators, the type that you've seen in calc one and calc two. A partial differential equation, the solution is a function of several or multiple independent variables. And they involve partial differential operators. So you may have seen the curly D, right? If you've taken Cal 3, you know what a partial derivative, um, a partial derivative is. A partial differential equation is a differential equation built out of partial derivatives. An ordinary differential equation is a differential equation built out of normal derivatives. So like y prime or regular old dy dx. Um, 
we will be focused primarily on ODEs. PDEs, these are hard. These are also hard, but they're slightly less hard. Right? Um, partial differential equations, you, you generally have to treat each one as its own thing, develop a whole new method for every single partial differential equation you encounter. There is no like, there's very little kind of overall branching theory that's, that's useful everywhere. ODEs, ordinary differential equations, uh, there are large collections of ODEs where you can solve them all using the same tricks. And I'm gonna, that's mainly what I'm gonna teach you in this class. Um, so PDEs, partial differential equations, are differential equations involving multiple independent variables. ODEs, ordinary differential equations, are differential equations involving a single independent variable. So you'll have like y, your dependent variable, and x, your independent variable. Um, that's, uh, you know, a differential equation built out of that shit is an ODE. A PDE, you might have y, your dependent variable, and then x and t, two different independent variables. If you've ever heard of the wave equation or Schrodinger's equation, um, those are all partial differential equations, and they're hard. They're very, very hard. The theory here is, is tricky. You want to learn how to solve these, go to grad school for mathematics. ODEs, much more manageable. Um, so don't get me wrong, plenty of these are very hard also, but there's more theory here than there is here. So we will focus on ODEs. With a few small exceptions. I will teach you how to solve a few PDEs. Okay, so then within ODEs, we have a few other classifications. Um, let's see, we want to talk about order first. Uh, the order of a differential equation. The order of an ODE. Um, this is really a definition. The order of an ODE is the highest order derivative which appears in the equation. So for example, the ODE that we started with, y prime equals y, is a first order ODE. It's a first order ordinary differential equation. Uh, first order or order one, because the highest derivative you saw there was y prime. Uh, examples, y prime minus y equals zero, which is the same differential equation we saw before is, an order one ODE. Y double prime plus two Y, um, two Y prime plus Y equals zero is an order two ordinary differential equation because the highest derivative you see here is the second derivative. Um, and you can see where this is gonna go. If I had something like, also let me show you some notation also. If I had something like y 2021 um, equals y. Do you have my new address? Where this parentheses here, just like at the end of Calc 2 when you talked about series represents the order of the derivative. This would be an order 2021. So here I'd be saying I'm looking for a function whose 2021st derivative is equal to the original function. Yep. 
questions about the order of a differential equation? Sorry, that's my son. We've got a, a five week old baby in the house. All right, so order is the highest derivative that you see. Another important kind of categorization is whether a, an ODE is linear or nonlinear. Um, so hopefully you remember what linear equations are from your algebra class, uh, kind of in, in very basic terms, a linear equation is one in which the variables are only ever shown up to the power of one, right? Never to any larger powers or non-integer powers, never downstairs, never under radicals or anything like that. A linear ODE. And I'll say specifically an ODE, um, a differential equation in ODE is called linear. If it is linear in Y, Y prime, Y double prime, and so on. Um, what I mean by that. Variables y, y prime, y double prime, etc., only appear to the power of one. Now, the reason I'm specifying here linear in y, y prime, y double prime, and so on, is because there are other variables involved. I haven't shown you any examples, um, but you can have, for example, let's start, let's start with something like this. x squared, y double prime, minus 3x y prime plus 2y equals e to the x. All right, here is a terrifying pitch of a differential equation. Um, this is a linear equation. Might not be obvious, but this is a linear equation. Even though there's an x squared, even though there's an e to the x, which we normally think of as nonlinear things. This is a linear second order ODE because the linearity of a differential equation has nothing to do with the requirements on x. It's all about the variables y. It's all about what's going on with the dependent variables. So I'll classify this using all the terms we've discussed so far. This is a ordinary, right, ODE. The order is two. And it is linear. It's linear because it's linear in the variables y, y prime, y double prime. All right. I said there's a question from Miguel. What's up, Miguel? Professor, we're not going to see uh, T as variable in, in this uh, class? We will. For today, for right now, I'm trying to keep things maximally simple. 
Um, oh. So right now I'm going to use the prime for the derivative. I'm going to use y for my dependent variable and x for my independent variable. Um, but down the road, certainly I'll use different symbols, different notation for derivatives. I'm just trying to stick with what I think most people know for today. All right. Um, so yeah, if you had something else, you know, like um, s or something else as your dependent variable, of course, what we would mean is that uh, for an equation to be linear, it needs to be linear in the dependent variable. Um, let's look at an example that's nonlinear, and then I'll give you the kind of technical definition here. The second example is an ODE. Still an ordinary differential equation, no partial derivatives involved here. Um, the order again, uh, or no, sorry, the order here is one because the highest order derivative we see is the first derivative, y prime. Um, and this is nonlinear. because the y prime term is squared, right? So if you see any of the dependent variables raised to powers other than one, then that is a nonlinear differential equation. Linear differential equations are so much nicer than nonlinear differential equations. I can't even begin to tell you. I will actually show you how to solve differential equations like this first one, as intimidating as this looks. Um, this is what's called a Cauchy-Euler equation, or is very similar to a Cauchy-Euler equation. We'll be able to solve stuff like this. Um, I won't I have a question how to solve most stuff like this. Yeah, Cody. I noticed that on WebAssign, some of the equations they give us to find the order of are not in the format y prime, but are in the format of, say, uh, d square x over dy square. Yep, we'll get there. Like I said uh, to Miguel, I'm going to start out with kind of notation that I think most people are familiar with. The next thing we're going to talk about after classification is different notations. Um, but if, if you're curious, I can, uh, you know, y prime is dy dx, y double prime is d2y over dx squared. We'll talk about the other notations for a derivative in a second. Um, one more example of a, a nonlinear equation. Um, let's see if we did something like. This is again an ordinary differential equation. Can anybody tell me the order of the ODE here? What's the order of this differential equation? Feel free to shout is out. Is it a third order one? Good, good. Right here I've got y prime, here I've got y double prime, the second derivative, and here I've got y triple prime. So the highest order derivative we see is the order of the ODE. So here, the highest order derivative is the third derivative. So the order is three. All right. Is this third order ODE linear or nonlinear? Nonlinear. Very good. Which term makes it nonlinear? The e to the, the, e to the y. Excellent. OK. So those are the classification schemes that we need for right now. Later, when we talk about linear ODEs, I will classify them further as constant coefficient or not constant coefficient. Um, but we'll hold off on that for a minute. For now, the other thing I need to show you is some notation, some alternate notation. So hopefully you're all familiar with the prime notation for derivatives. Uh, we need to make sure you're comfy with some of the other notations for derivatives.
Okay, so if y is equal to y of x, right, is a, a function of x. Then y prime is the same as dy dx. Um, and you could also write this as d dx of y. y double prime is written as d2y over dx squared. And the reason for that is that uh, you can think of this as the operator ddx all squared applying to y. So right, if you were to kind of treat this algebraically, then the square of d over dx would be d2 or d squared over dx squared. And you slap a y on, you get this. But here's the normal, what's called Leibniz notation for the second derivative. y triple prime would be d3y over dx cubed or dx cubed applied to y. And you can see where this is going. If you want to talk about the mth derivative, where m is an integer, hopefully. Um, I'll, in the prime notation, I'll write that as y with the superscript parentheses m. In the Leibniz notation, this would be dmy over dx to the m, uh, which is the result of applying the mth power of d dx to the function y. Okay. The prime notation is nice when we know what variables we're using. Like I told you guys, I'm just using x and y right now. x is the independent, y is the dependent. So there's no harm in using the prime notation. The Leibniz notation, the middle column here, is very useful when you want to be explicit about what your variables are, right? If I say y prime, that doesn't tell you that the independent variable is x. If I say dy dx, I'm being very clear. It's the derivative of the variable y taken with respect to the variable x. Leibniz notation is useful when you've got alternate variables or extra constants floating around. You want to make sure you know what symbols are what. In the Leibniz notation, I can describe for you a uh, differential equation in a few different ways. What would I like to do first? I think I would like to show you the um, standard form of a linear equation. And I want to make sure I use the same notation that your textbook uses. So. Let's see here. Well, maybe they don't get the fully general form. Well, maybe not. Okay. Like they did. So this form, normal form, general form of a linear ODE. Maybe not. This one, I talk about the differential form. Okay, well, I'll show you here anyway. So, the technical definition of an nth order linear. ODE uh, is this. Actually, let me, because I feel like, I feel like your homework has a specific thing here that they wanted you to use. And I, when I was putting that together, I assumed that came from the textbook, but it appears to not come from the textbook. So give me just one second to triple check. Yeah, here it is, matching it with 6 and 1.1. All right, this is what I wanted to show you, and they're using a and oh. So a differential equation, order n 
differential equation is called linear if it can be written in this way. A n of x times the nth derivative of y plus a n minus one of x times the n minus first derivative of y. And this goes all the way down to a one x times the first derivative of y plus a zero of x times y itself. And on the right hand side, we have at most a function of x. All right, where a n of x, a n minus one of x, all the way down to a zero of x, are pure functions of x. as is g of x. So any ODE that can be written in this form is a linear ODE. And any ODE that cannot be written in this form is automatically not a linear ODE. Now you could replace dNy, dn minus one y, dy dx. You could replace all of these derivatives with the prime notation. I could call this y n. I can call this y n minus one. I can call this y prime. Um, same thing. Same thing. The a n's here, a n of x, a n minus one of x, a one of x, a zero of x, all of those are called the coefficients. which is a little weird because we're used to coefficients being numbers, but here they're just functions of X. These are called the coefficients. And the function G of X on the right-hand side is called the input or driver for reasons that come from physics. Uh, and while this is the technical definition of a linear nth order ODE, I think it's easier to just look at the thing and ask, well, are all of the Y things linear? Um, are all of the Y things being raised to the power of one, not under radicals, not downstairs in a fraction, that sort of thing. The, the normal concept of linearity that you have um, will suffice here, as long as you remember, like we said at the start, that it's the Y stuff that has to be linear. Uh, one or two quick other things that I want to share with you before I let you go for today. Um, we're just going to stick to 1.1 .1 today. I don't want to overwhelm. It's a, a different way of writing some differential equations. So sometimes, uh, specifically at the end of Calc 3, when you're starting to play around a little bit with something called Green's theorem or Stokes theorem, um, you'll see differential equations written in terms of what are called differential forms, um, one forms, two forms, and so on. It is sometimes nicer to rewrite a differential equation kind of in terms of the one forms or two forms that underlie it. Um, your book calls this the differential form of a differential equation. So I'll go ahead and show you how to go back and forth from the differential form and the, the kind of regular form. And I'll use their example. Uh, your homework has one or two things in there that look a little bit like this. So strictly speaking, a differential is different from a derivative, and a differential form um, is a, an n form, an object in differential geometry that's built out of things like dx and dy on their own. If we take the first order ODE, the 
the first order linear OBE. E. Uh, y minus x plus 4x dy dx equals 0. And multiply through everywhere by dx. Um, first, actually, first, let's put all the y terms on the left and non y terms on the right. I'm going to put this into kind of the standard form, the form that you saw in the definition a second ago. This piece is a y term. This piece, the x here, the minus x, he doesn't have any y's attached to him. He's going to go to the right hand side. This piece, 4x times dy dx, he's also a y term. So if I want to put this in the standard form of a linear equation, like we saw in that definition, I would write this as 4x times dy dx plus y equals x. This is the same ODE. I've just added x to both sides and then changed the order of the addition on the left-hand side. So this is the highest order term. I put it first. The 4x is multiplying that, so they stay together. Uh, the y term here is positive, so we have plus y. And then the x goes over to the other side because it doesn't have any y's or y primes or anything like that. Um, this would be the input or driver function. And here's the sort of left hand or homogeneous side. Um, we see that it's order one because the highest order derivative we have here is just dy dx, the first derivative. It's not constant coefficient it's a variable coefficient because the coefficient function a1 here, a1 of x is 4x a2 of x, I'm sorry, a0, a0 of x. The term associated with the zero derivative um, is just the constant function one. And g of x, the input or driver is x. So these are the pieces from the definition we saw here. If you compare that, um, you'll see that this is how they line up. So that's going from kind of this silly form into the standard form. And then if we want to put that into differential form, uh, we can can multiply both sides by dx. And this is something that um, calculus professors hate because they say, you know, dx isn't a number, it's not a variable, it's some special thing. It's called a one form. Um, but we can do that. You know, there's no harm in doing that. And then we can kind of regroup our terms. So if I multiply through everywhere here by dx, I would get 4x dy plus y dx equals x dx. Take every term here and multiply by dx. The dy over dx here will cancel and you just have dy y times dx is y dx, x times dx is x dx. I can pull this term back over if I want to and combine it with the y dx term. So I'd have plus y minus x dx. And all of this would now be equal to 0. The object on the left-hand side here is what's called a one form. It is, it is 
an object from differential geometry called a differential form. Um, and they're useful when you want to think about these things geometrically. We won't be messing with them very much, um, but you encounter one or two of these things in your homework. Some of the homework problems um, give you a differential equation in this type form, and you'll want to put it into this type form before you start working on it. I think that's everything I want to share with you guys today. Let me take a quick look through your textbook and make sure I'm not forgetting anything from this section, but I'm uh, fairly sure. What trivial solutions and integrals of solutions the other solution is? Maybe it would be good for us to look at one more example where we're going to verify a solution. Symbols plus one solution. System of yeah, no, we're good. All right. Um, so let me grab an example problem from your book here. Verify the integer function is an explicit solution. All right, let's do it. First, any questions on the terminology? Let me back up for just a minute. Come back to this page. Any questions on the notation or definitions here? Is everybody familiar with the prime and Leibniz notation? Are there any questions about what the objects in this definition are? Yeah, Professor. Yes. Could you write that as a series too, right? You could. Yeah, you could write this in sigma notation if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this term right here might be a little bit hard to get, right? These two terms would be a little hard to, to put into things notation-wise. If you wanted to, you would use the kind of the far right notation for that. But yes, you could. Any other questions about the, the notation here or the definition here? Any questions about how we arrived at this expression from the differential equation that are given at the start? Or how we were able to put this in standard form, standard linear form? Okay, yeah, the last thing I would like to do then is work an example with you guys. We're going to verify that a given function is a solution to a differential equation. And it won't be quite as simple as the, the last one that we did. Verify that the differential equation y prime equals 25 plus y squared is solved by y equals 5 tangent 5x. Five Uh, maybe before we even even do that, I'd like to ask you uh, to classify this differential equation. What's the order of the ODE here? First order. I heard it. I think Malin, uh, I was able to hear there. It's a first order ODE. Good. Is this a linear or nonlinear first order ODE? Nonlinear. Excellent, Cody. Yeah, nonlinear because of the y squared term, right? 
If I change the y squared to an x squared, would this be linear or nonlinear? That would make linear. it linear. Excellent. That would make it linear, right? An x squared here is no problem, but a y squared here is a problem. So we want to be linear in the solution variable. All right. If I'm going to verify that this function is a solution to this first order nonlinear ODE, I need to build the ODE out of this function. In other words, I'll take the derivative and I'll plug it in here. I'll take the original function, I'll plug it in here. Uh, and then we'll see if we get a true statement. So if y is five times the tangent of five x, then y primed is what we get when you apply the operator ddx to five tangent of five x. The five, this five pops out. One of the last time was you guys took a derivative, so I'll be real slow on this one. Um, this is a chain rule derivative, right? So first I use my rule that says constant multiples pop out. Um, and then I need to differentiate this using the chain rule. So I differentiate the outside, leaving the inside alone. The derivative of the tangent function is secant squared. So this would be five times secant squared of five X times, I need to multiply by the derivative of the inner function here. I'll just write it as what it is, it's five. So the derivative of the inner function is the derivative of five X is five. So this is by the chain rule. Uh, and if you're forgetting the chain rule or forgetting any of your differentiation rules, remember there are links in Canvas under the review module. Um, please, please, please go practice that shit immediately. So this would be 25 secant squared of five X, just combining these two fives. And the question is, is that equal to 25 plus the square of the original function? Um, so now we plug in. Now plugging into the ODE, we have Y prime, which is 25 secant squared of 5x. And this is supposed to be equal to 25 plus the original function, which is y uh, squared. So that would be 5 tan 5x. All squared. And the question is, is, is this a true statement? That's what I want to know. If this is a true statement, then yeah, this is a solution to that differential equation. If this is not a true statement, then no, this is not a solution. Let's start over here. If I square this out, I'll have 25 tan squared 5x. I got 25 secant squared of 5x is equal to 25 plus 25 tan squared of 5x. Anybody advise me where to go from here? You can pull out the 25 and make it 1 plus tangent squared 5x. Excellent. On the right hand side, I have an opportunity to use a trick identity if I factor the 25. If I factor 25 out here, I get 1 plus tan squared of 5x. And then I know that 1 plus tan squared theta, some other colors here, I know that 1 plus, whoop, tangent squared of anything is equal to secant squared of that same thing. So I can make use of this identity to rewrite the right-hand side. Left-hand side is still 25 secant squared 5x. Now my right-hand side is 
25. Well, 1 plus 10 squared of 5x is secant squared of 5x. And yeah, so this is a true statement. Right? 25 secant squared of 5x is indeed equal to 25 secant squared of 5x. With one small caveat. What's the caveat? Are there any values of x for which this is not true? Zero. I think zero is going to be okay, but what are we getting at? What's the what's the possible problem here? Starts with a D. Pi over two. Mm. Yeah, we're getting closer. Pi over two. Actually, pi over ten is going to be the problem spots here. Multiples odd multiples of pi over ten, but why? Undefined functions of tangents. Yeah, domain issues, right? Which is true. Or all x's in the domain of, uh, what do we need to watch out? Secant squared of 5x and tangent of 5x, they actually have the same domain. The, uh, those functions are happy as long as cos of 5x is non-zero in the domain of um, tan 5x. Which is? Uh, how do you piss off the function tan 5x? Well, you, if the cosine of 5x is 0, then the tangent of 5x is undefined, right? And odd multiples of pi over 10. Yeah, very good. Odd multiples of pi over 10. Um, so cos 5x is equal to 0. Let me show you really quick how to do this in case you forget from your trig class. And then we will wrap up for today. Cos 5x is equal to 0 if, if and only if, um, 5x is equal to some odd multiple, 2n plus 1 times pi over 2, uh, where n is any integer, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, so on. Um, and then we can say, OK, dividing by 5, that's the same as saying x is some odd multiple, 2n plus 1 times pi over 10. And again, n, 0, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, and so on. Uh, so as long as x is not one of these guys, not an odd multiple of pi over 10, then cos of 5x will be non-zero, which means tangent of 5x will be defined, um, which means that, yeah, this ODE is happy. Uh, this ODE is indeed solved by that. So the core of the work is here. All right, this is what you need to do. This is us verifying that that function does at least symbolically solve the ODE. And then the latter steps, we're just checking the domain. So what I have on page right now, this is what I would want to see as a solution, for example, on a test. Any questions on this one? Alrighty then, gang, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here for today. It's been lovely meeting all of you. Please take a look at that syllabus and most importantly, get registered in WebAssign. Get registered in WebAssign, get registered in WebAssign. You got a shitload of homework. It's going to be coming to you very often. You need to stay on it. You need to work every single day. I'll have an office hour this afternoon from 3 to 4 p.m. You can join through the link in Canvas. If you need to talk to me about anything, you can always send me a Canvas message or um, an email. That would be lovely. Or of course, come by office hours. Uh, I will see you tomorrow morning. Thank you, Professor. Have a good day. Take care, Cody.